Hi, Terry here again. Continuing a focus on reimagining retirement, kind of following a, a book that I wrote a while back, but another way to look at it, broadening it a little bit, to reimagining midlife and life beyond midlife. Looking at it as less a time of settling in and saying this is a time when growth and being stretched and those things is done, so I'm going to settle in. And I understand that after retiring from career, taking a whatever six-month or a one-year sabbatical to, to kind of recuperate and to adjust to a different life, but, but settling in doesn't work for me. Or worse yet, settling for. The idea that the middle, midlife and beyond is that you have to settle for, you know, getting older uh, in terms of less physical ability, um, less learning, less interaction, coping with stuff, dealing with loss. All those things, factors, but not defining that stage of life. So it's reimagining that second half of life as a time to maximize, a time to grow, a time to expand, a, a wonderful gift of um, a positive gift. So looking at different areas, um, did a video on physical, maximizing our physical health. So for me, that meant uh, already getting more sleep than I did before, um, spent an hour at the gym, just working out and so on. And yesterday did quite a bit of walking of of course, the other part is had an apple fritter at a local bakery, so that one kind of sets back a little bit, so I, I understand that part too. But, but overall, looking to maximize, and we've been having doctor's appointments after COVID and not keeping up with medical-type checkups and so on, having way more doctor's appointments than we would have ever dreamed of in the first half of life. Just getting checked out, getting a few minor things taken care of before they become major. So physical area, and then talked about um, emotional health. I sat this morning for an hour just kind of breathing and thinking through things and doing some journaling and reading some things that help me get in touch with the emotions that I have, being willing and able to open myself. And I call it some of those closets inside that you know, the hurts or the, the sadnesses and so on that I kind of stuffed into a closet and closed the door on in my heart and, and locked it up because I was so busy well, allowing myself to open some of those and deal with them. Then um, expanding your heart. It's a time to expand your heart and just um, feel more deeply with others. Allow yourself to experience compassion or empathy or, or listen more carefully. Um, took a course the other day on Lakota or Native Americans. And rather than feeling I needed to defend my male white empire um, perspective, just sitting and listening, not arguing, but allowing myself to expand my heart and wonder about things. And for this video, focus on expanding our mind. Might be a little bit of a surprise that I would talk about for the second half of life, or I'm in my 70s and I'm looking forward to expanding my mind throughout however many years and decades that I have left. Typically, I find in culture when I ask people about this area, they think about slowing down or, or learning less or expanding the mind less. And there are some realities to it. Um, I find that my clock speed, how quickly I can process stuff, is slower than it used to be. And that could be seen as negative or positive. I talk about the little file guy in my head that 
I'm trying to remember something and the little, the little um, file guy has to run around finding the right file cabinet, the right drawer, and then the right folder to, to bring that information up. Uh, the file guy's a little older. He's a little tired, doesn't grab onto things as quickly or, or file things quite as well as it used to be. And um, there are some realities to that. I get that. I understand that. But the other side is the fact that I slow down. I, I wrote in here, our mental processes slow down, but we have a rich and diverse history of experiences and information to work with. So I have more experiences and I, I don't jump to conclusions as quickly. I don't have those quick answers. This is the question, this is the answer. This is the question, this is the answer. Rather, this is the question, hmm. I'm not sure I have an answer to that. I can sit and wonder about it. So I'm treating this season presently and the seasons to come as a time to expand my mind, to think about things more, to, to learn more things. We belong here. We're very fortunate in the southwest Michigan area, close to a college, Hope College, um, that has something called HASP, Holland area senior professionals. So it's we're retired, you need to be retired to be part of it, but um, they, they offer courses. I might offer a couple of courses myself once I settle in and get used to the program, but we're taking maybe four, five, six classes per week on a diverse number of areas. Um, one course we took, one class we took is a part of a series called God, Guns, and Politics. How does that go together? Another one we took was, as I mentioned before, the Lakota tribe or Native Americans. What's their culture like? Yesterday we took one on how to convert, you know, boxes of memories that we have, photos and slides and negatives. How do you convert those into digital in a way that we can use that? So it's just a wide diversity of classes learning there and spend probably half an hour to an hour a day reading things that stretch me. So I'm seeing this as a time to, to learn, to grow, to, to um, let's say, look into new and fresh areas. I did a lot of reading and studying before, but it was how to do my job better how to learn, how to, how to keep the corporation going, how to, how to accurately say, this is what we believe, this is how we work, this is what we think. Now I'm free to read more. And as my ego building settles in, I don't need to keep propping my, my sense of self up more, I can read stuff that pushes against me. My biases, um, seem to be um, less firm, more permeable, so I can read and learn more that goes beyond what I was able to hear before. So I'm thinking of this season as a time to learn. Learn with others in terms of HASP classes. Learn with others in terms of you know, I'm reading. I, I listen quite a bit to YouTube videos especially ones that stretch me and cause me to question. I'm sitting with questions, and when I have those questions uh, about major things, be it um, Native Americans, just because I think of that because of um, the class I took, or um, the Black Lives Matter, or even issues like abortion, or pro-life, which I see as a different different issue, but I, I, I'm able at this point to say, I'm going to read more. I'm going to listen to recommendations for reading from someone that I have disagreed with and say, what would you recommend that I read? And that gets back into that emotional health or expanding my heart, learning. Learning about other people's perspectives learning about things underneath the quick answers that I, that I gave before, um, answers that people gave to me. So a time to expand your mind. Some ideas for expanding your mind. Earn a degree or certificate. 
After I retired, I earned my doctorate, wrote a dissertation. So you might want to get a degree or certificate of some sort. Write a book and self-publish. Doesn't mean it has to be the average book that's written um, is printed about for 100 copies. Doesn't have to be a bestseller. Doesn't have to be money-making necessarily. Um, this, this book, Retirement Reimagined, because it has so many, so many graphics and so many colors and so on. Um, I think on Amazon it sells for 15 or 16, and I think I just saw one more sold. So, out of the 15 or 16, two bucks came in my, came in my um, checking account, which means could buy a couple of donuts. So it's it does it's not a money making thing for the second half of life necessarily, but but for your own learning, forcing you to think through some things. Um, Read one nonfiction book per month written by authors you haven't considered before. Pick books that unsettle and stretch you, even irritate you. I do that regularly. Reading a book that just stretches or irritates me or forces me to sit back and think, I haven't thought of it that way, or I love it when I sit down and say, I disagree with that. Then sit with it and go, hmm, do I? Why do I? Um, Re-career. Pick an area of work that always intrigued you and get trained for it. Um, there's a financial reality for retirement years, and, and maybe it's a time to think through this is not only a time where I have to work, where I have to earn some income to survive. It might be re-careering. What, what always interested you? Is there an opening for that? Can you be trained for that? Or learn a new language through Rosetta Stone or take a course in your area. Um, my wife Anita has talked about that. Just learning a different language and learning to speak it and then maybe even reward ourselves with immersing ourselves in an area where that happened. Take courses through great courses or maybe a, a local um, organization that offers classes. And for us, it's $5 per class. So take a series of three or four, quite often taught by professors. It can be like $15, $20. So it's, it's an amazing thing. Um, or maybe take a practical course like cooking or writing. Then share your new ability with a circle of friends. Maybe take the course with a few of you. and um, List questions you have about anything and everything. Just why do I wonder about that or what... What do I have a firm belief in or, or conviction of where other people that I care for and I respect have a different opinion? And then read about that topic in books or things or, or sit down with them and say, help me, help me understand that perspective. Not to convert them, not to show them how they're wrong or not to bolster your own ego of saying, see, I knew I was right, just to listen. So I'd encourage you to reimagine the second half of your life, not as a time for your mind to, to settle in or disengage, but to say the second half of life is an amazing time, more secure, slow down a little bit so it doesn't jump to conclusions as quickly, and a time to expand boundaries I know before I had to be careful, especially as a teaching pastor, I had to be careful what I said, what I started believing into. Now I am freer. There are areas of my life that I recognize because I've been thinking this way, I've been expanding my mind. As I say, I am so unemployable. I would not pass, probably pass my ordination exams anymore because I'm asking broader questions. I'm wondering about things. I'm less convinced about some areas. So think about that. Imagine retirement or the second half of your life as a time to expand your mind, not to settle in, not to settle for, but to just imagine and learn and grow and, and see boundaries break down, see, see those boundaries become more permeable. Um, it's an exciting time. It's a cool time. So think about that. Talk to you next time.